Howdy, my name is Salman. I'm the program director of Betacamp, and today I'm going to walk you through the steps you need to take to launch a startup in less than one month. The goal of this video is to give you the confidence to take action steps necessary to build momentum. Before we jump in, let's eliminate some limiting beliefs. This is something you can fully do in a month's time. High school students I work with at Betacamp take these very steps to build a real business in less than a month. Your mindset when working on this entrepreneurial venture and with life as a whole will directly influence what you achieve and what you accomplish. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. So let's start with where it all begins, an idea. The ideation stage is crucial to set yourself up for success. You have to remember that a business solely exists to solve a problem for a customer. From Tesla to Google to your local shawarma shop, all businesses solve problems. As you think about your venture, the focus should always be on who you are solving this problem for and understanding that problem on a fundamental level. If you're struggling with thinking of an idea, I would encourage you to be an observer of the world. Take notes of your environment and identify what are the problems and inefficiencies that exist in your life and the lives of those you care about. Now, a lot of companies fail in the ideation stage because they hyper-focus on a solution or innovation rather than the problem. You cannot retroactively make a problem exist. An example of this is back in 2013, Google developed a $1,500 wearable computer called the Google Glasses, and it failed spectacularly despite having all this hype around it. The reason they failed is because they were a solution that didn't solve a painful enough problem. The solution was not practical for the problem and they didn't build for a clear customer. Smartphones did a better job of solving the same problems that the Google Glasses aimed to accomplish, but with way less hassle. There are so many examples of companies failing because they had a solution mindset. Rather than focusing on a problem, it is imperative that you have a problem mindset as you build. So how do you avoid the same mistake Google made? Well, once you have a problem clearly defined, it's crucial you understand the customer who faces this problem. The way to do this is to talk to your target customers. You want to understand your customer's problems, why they face this issue, and how they face it. As we move on to the next stage of building your company, you need your customer's input to make decisions, which should be backed by data you collect. And this brings us to an important step in your journey of building, which is user research. This is a step where things get a little scientific. Similar to how you take precautions in a titration lab in chemistry, your user research should be a structured process with the hypothesis that you aim to understand. In your user research, you should not ask your target customer, what would you like us to build? Or what features do you want? I'll repeat myself. Your goal is to understand the problem that your customer faces and what job they are hiring to solve. Henry Ford said it best, if I'd asked people what they wanted, they would have simply said faster horses. There are many ways to conduct user research. Two very popular forms are user interviews and surveys. Here's some advice for an early stage company. Niche down in the beginning. It's easier to build for a niche. It's easier to talk to a niche and it's easier to build intentionally for a niche. You'll save a lot of time by not targeting the entire world and hoping for the best. If you build for everyone, you're building for no one. As you niche down, you should find the customer base you care about as you're going to spend a lot of time understanding their problems on a fundamental level and you'll be working to build a solution for them. A great example here is Patagonia. Patagonia started as a niche business focused on providing high quality clothing and gear specifically for rock climbers. Instead of just starting a clothing company for everyone, they niched down to a subgroup, outdoorsy people who love rock climbing. Now they've expanded into a wider customer base. So once you have this momentum with your core base, you can always expand. Facebook is another company that started with a niche. Facebook started as a social network for Ivy League students. As they grew traction, they opened up to more US colleges until finally expanding into the massive company that you recognize today. Let's do a recap so far. 
We know that we need to approach our idea from a problem lens. Next, we want to understand the persona of the customer we're looking to build for. We do this through user research. You can take this actually a step further and create a customer persona, which is a mock-up of what an average customer you're looking to serve and what they look like, what they care about, where you can find them, and what is it that they value. The next step would be to actually create a hypothesis around the perfect solution for your customer persona. You should have a list of things that they care about and what you think will drive value for them to a point where they actually open up their wallet and use your product. And this is where the MVP comes in. And I'm not talking about Kobe Bryant here. RIP Kobe. I'm talking about a minimum viable product. The easiest way to think about this is the least amount of work or resources you have to do or compile to provide to prove your hypothesis for your solution and validate your idea. Your goal here is to get enough information to make decisions. The reason you need an MVP is so you don't invest millions of dollars into developing an app or a product just to find out that no one wants it. An MVP is a version one of your solution. You wanna know if you're on the right track as quickly as possible. You're throwing something out into the world and collecting data and making changes or continuing according to this data. The key here is to have a bias towards action. You want to move really quickly and iterate frequently. Your MVP should be cheap. It's okay if it's not museum worthy. It doesn't need to be posted in the Louvre. It should be easy to build. And it's okay if your MVP isn't built to scale. You're testing for a hypothesis and a solution as quickly as possible. Now, that was a lot of information, but let's quickly walk through it all. First, you wanna come up with an idea from a problem focus. Second, you wanna to talk to as many target customers to understand the problem they face on a fundamental level. You're using these insights from your user research, and you should have a clear customer in mind and a clear problem that they face. Finally, you wanna create a hypothesis on what a solution for them would actually look like and building a minimum viable product that attempts to validate these hypotheses. Thanks for sticking around until the very end and I hope you learned something new today. Ciao, sayonara, bye for now.